Hi everyone, it's Chase Cutter Tutorials, where we cut right to the chase about what you want to know. Today's tutorial is about the MPK Mini MK2 Editor. In other words, the editor for this keyboard. What it does is it allows you to remap stuff. <laughs> like remap, for instance, what these pads do, okay? So if you hit on your keyboard the Program Select button, there are four programs that I'm cycling through as I talk, okay? These four programs are just like if you were playing a video game and you pressed pause and, and went to controller, you know, change controls. And if there was four default mappings of the controls, that's what these are, okay? So as you cycle through these, think, how would I want to change these pads and these knobs and everything um, in four different ways to fit four different workflows in my music production stuff, okay? So that's what this program is for. There, I told you the basic answer. Um, in one minute. It's going to take a little bit of extra time today to actually get all this addressed because this is a really dog shit confusing interface. It is bad. It's really foreboding. And almost anyone who looks at this first time just says, you know what, fuck that. I'll deal with that later. And then they never do. And that's sad because what you can do is quadruple the efficiency um, of this tiny little thing with this little editor once you get past all of its bullshit. All right, so let's do it. Let's first break down this terrible graphic user interface that someone had the nerve to fucking release to the public, and then we'll dig into how to actually make um, uh, a thing. Let's actually talk about this here for a minute. Um, this joystick picture doesn't do anything, it, but these, if you want to affect your joystick and what it does, if you're a smarty pants, uh, that's that box. The bank A and bank B box. The green one is around bank A, and bank B has a red square around it. All that's representing is is these eight pads. When you have the green bank A light on, those eight pads represent these eight um, things, <laughs> squares. When you press bank B, so any changes you make in these bottom eight squares will be in effect when you hit the pads on bank B. You'll see it put into play when we actually get to that. The knobs up top are the knobs. Low is the lowest in MIDI information that that knob will send. 127 is maximum in MIDI speak, if you didn't know. So that's the highest that a knob would send, okay? If you want to tweak those, do it. I don't see any reason to yet for my own stuff, okay? Transposition, don't fuck with it. If you're super smart, then go for it. Otherwise, just don't fuck with it. Arpeggiator um, is just if you want to, like, build in some arpeggiator settings to these four different uh, settings. Oh, I didn't really talk about, these aren't really sections of the thing, but um, pad MIDI channel is, when you're pressing these, what MIDI channel do they send to? Send it to one, basically, or two. And um, key bed is these and the controls. Okay, <laughs> set that to two. All right, there. Now I have so little time to actually get to it. So this is your save and load menu for your four different control schemes. All right, so we're going to get, that means load. All the get buttons think of as load to this editor. Send means save them back to your keyboard. Um, all right, so press get on program two. This should pop up. If it doesn't, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> press MPK mini two on both of them, apply, and okay. And then if you wanted to get to that otherwise, options device setup does the same thing. All right, cool. It gives you ugly notes um, by default. I think mine are set to the thing I want. But so don't look at mine. Look at yours. They are ugly. <laughs> They're set not in a scale. They're very not musical. They're probably set up for some weird Akai thing. Okay. It's gross. So we're going to change them. All right. So I'm going to make them. So if we're playing in the scale of C major, whatever, if I want to dip below the default octave of this keyboard, of course I could just do it by switching down here. But say I wanted to just hold the chord while I play a higher octave. That's pretty cool, right? So, but I want it to be in the C major scale that I'm playing in. So, this lowest note in the default octave, at least, is C uh, three, I think. So that would mean we could make this also C three, and then just the notes of the scale down to C two. Um, okay, so that's what we're gonna do. So these are the numberings of the pad: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Meaning, intuitively, you would want the highest one to be up here. So I would set that to C2. I'm sorry, I'm screaming into the mic, by the way. <laughs> um, so yeah, that'd be C2. Now, normally, you have to think of what each of the notes is in the scale and click each one of these note things and scroll to the right note. 
till you get it. But if you have certain scales, like major and minor, you can just do this a lot faster by going to Tools, Auto Populate. I'm going to set a scale. You can do a chromatic scale, which it would be great um, for a lot of practices, but we're going to just be musical today and do major. Hit the check mark to apply that. So I'm actually, what I'm doing is I'm starting with the sm the lowest note, okay? So I want it to go up. So that would mean I would want to go to C2 to be one octave below my default octave. So I just got to scroll to C2. There. 36, um, all these numbers here, including the 36 I'm looking at, is just the numeric value on the whole piano roll of everything. So it's just the 36th note in all of midi -dum. I don't know, whatever. That's just what that is. I'm just telling you. So I'm going to apply this major scale from C2 upwards to C3 to bank A. Okay? Then I'm gonna, while I'm here, I'm going to be a total badass and click minor and do the same octave, but I'm going to change it to, oh yeah, minor. <laughs> and then uh, click apply to bank B. Super cool, super smart. All right, now it's not going to save. It's not going to send back to your thing until you hit send. So send it to program two. And for now, we're done, okay? All right, so it changed all these notes to the respective notes needed for the major in the green and in the dark, creepy red. It's the minor scale, okay? Close it. You have to close that before you open whatever you're going to use your keyboard for. Okay, so we're in, I'm in FL Studio. You can test this in whatever, though, but basically... Um, just find anything that's going to use your MIDI notes that has a keyboard you can look at. So I'm going to use Citrus. I used Citrus in FL Studio. I think everybody has that. And I just went to the Saw to Square um, pre preset. Okay, So it doesn't matter, but just to test it, and I'll use this nice little keyboard to show you the range. So normally I'm only covering you know, this octave. But I'd have to do that to go lower, and then lower, and then lower. Okay. But we want to be able to just play the lower notes while we're up here doing stuff. Okay, so we're going to play the C major scale. And then watch this. Oop. Now, remember how it was all major? Watch this. Bank B. Ready? We programmed minor, so. <laughs> God, my fingers suck. Cool. There. Accomplished. So now when you're, like, noodling around up here. <laughs> beautiful keyboard skill. You can hold chords. You know, I, I promise I'm actually pretty good at playing stuff. I'm just totally dicking around right now. Okay, so that's objective complete. Under 10 minutes, I hope. Um, that's everything. So now your next challenge would be to say you were loading FPC. FL Studio's default drum thing. So these... Jeez. <laughs> okay, so these all um, show you the note up here. If you look, I'm going to mouse over these. They show you the corresponding midi piano roll note that's needed to trigger them okay so your next challenge to kind of put this all into application just write the notes down for each of these 16 controllers and assign them to the a and then b banks for your buttons um in your editor you get it but i'm just gonna so you what you would do is get your program one and then figure out what the notes are um, I didn't <laughs> look at any of them, but go through here and, and figure out where you would want each one. So if it's a hi-hat, like, do I want it here or do I want it here in my A bank or, or here in my B bank? Figure that out for yourself um, and then map them and then go back or, you know, sit, send to program one and then make sure you switch to program one and test it out. Load FPC um, as a VST or whatever else you want to work on and see if the mappings that you set up for bank A and B are then working. Then you're already going to be up to snuff on all of this. I mean, that's it took you, what, 10 minutes? Okay, boom, beautiful. Then you could go really advanced and start tweaking knobs to see how that changes shit, and you could maybe even mess with the joystick, change the axis and the, the CC information. 
Then you could change the arpeggiator um, and maybe even get into transposition. So you get it. Eventually, you want four programs that help you um, just automatically in, in four of your different production roles, whether it be beat making, um, major and minor scales like we just did, arpeggiating, uh, contact. You could route this to contact, um, and you can change it. So these, if you find the right uh, articulation changers, modifiers, you could make these change articulations. So if you're playing a violin and it's legato, and it's like, and then you press the staccato button, and then it's going to make, dun, 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 or whatever. you know. So you can ch change that in contact, and that's actually why I'm learning how to do all this, um, because that's going to really help me. There you go. We're done. All right, cool. Till next time, it's been Chase Carter Tutorials. This one took a little longer because MPK Mini Editor is fucking shit. <laughs> but the keyboard itself is great for how tiny it is, and you can get a lot out of it, especially when you know how to wrestle this stupid fucking thing to the ground and, and get some real use out of it. And, uh, hopefully this tutorial got you through that really fast, and you can go enjoy your life <laughs> and make some good music. All right. See you next time. Subscribe if you want more tutorials like this that are straight to the fucking point. All right, bye.